Please introduce yourself. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, uh, okay, uh, my name's George. Hello and welcome to Page One English. My name is Jordan Page and in this video you'll be learning how to introduce yourself in a more confident and fluent way, not like in the video clip you just saw. Where you might need to do this is in your English class, at a job interview, and this will be covered in another video, at an event such as a conference, at the start of a company presentation or meeting, on a date, starting a new job or starting a new activity or hobby. And the newest one, and the one that's become really popular recently, uh, in a Zoom meeting. Self-introductions can be a nerve-wracking experience for anyone in any of the situations we just mentioned. Whenever I'm asked to give my introduction, I really get nervous beforehand, and English is my native language. I can only imagine how you feel as learners of English. The key to a great introduction is confidence. The way to achieve this is to have your introduction pre-written and prepared, and then practice, 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 so that you can memorize it and introduce yourself without needing to use your notes, even if you're asked to introduce yourself suddenly. As a practice, please write your self-introduction in the comments below, and I'll help and correct as many as I can. So let's jump into the lesson. We're going to split the lesson up into two parts. First, we'll focus on the more casual introduction, and the second will focus on a more formal or business introduction. The first important part that you're going to need is a good greeting. And the first set of greetings can be used in either a casual or a formal situation. You can say, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Any of these are good to use. Just make sure that you match the greeting to the time of day. You don't want to be saying good morning when it's evening time, and you don't want to be saying good evening when it's morning time. Although I have made that mistake myself. Just be careful, as I've heard a few times, people using good night and good day as greetings. However, good night is something that we say when we are leaving or saying goodbye to someone. With good day, I can understand why people use it because it seems to be like a good greeting for any time of the day. However, this is a very old fashioned way of speaking and something we do not use anymore. The next set of greetings are very informal and I wouldn't suggest using them in formal situations. They are very suitable for casual situations. You can quite simply say, hi, hey, what's up, all right, hiya, and howdy. Howdy is quite an American expression, and all right is more a British expression. Personally, because I'm British, I wouldn't use howdy as it's not a greeting that feels natural for me. I wouldn't feel comfortable using it. I always think of the stereotypical cowboys when hearing it. You should choose a greeting that you feel comfortable using and stick with it. I would feel more comfortable using all right, but I wouldn't feel comfortable using howdy. The second part is to give your name, which is pretty important. You can simply say I'm or I am and then your name. For example, I'm Jordan or I am Jordan Page. I would encourage you to use the contracted form I'm as it sounds much more natural. Or you can say my name is or my names and then your name. For example, my name is Barry or my name's Frederick Rose. You can either use just your first name or your first name and your surname, your family name. I usually only use my first name in casual situations and I use my first name and my surname in more formal or business situations. To add something extra and to make your introduction sound much more natural, you can use please call me. 
This is great if you have a long name and you would prefer people to use a shorter version of your name. For example, I'm Robert, please call me Rob. Or my name's Gillian, please call me Jill. The third part of your introduction is location, where you are from or where you are living. There are many options for us to use here. I'll start with the easier ones and move on to some that are a little more advanced. First, you can simply say, I'm from, and then the place name. I'm from Eastbourne. Or if you think it is good to say the country and the city or town, you can say, I'm from, and then the place name and your country. For example, I'm from Kyoto in Japan. You can also just say your nationality. For example, I'm British or I'm English. However, if you have one parent from one country and another parent from another country, you can say I'm half and then one nationality and half and then the other nationality. For example, I'm half British and half Filipino. Or you can say I'm British Filipino. Another option is to use come from. For example, I come from and then the place name. I come from Japan. I come from Glasgow. We usually use come from when we have traveled from a far away place. You can also talk about where you grew up. For example, I was born and raised in Eastbourne. Or if you were born in one place, but grew up in another, you can simply say, I was born in Japan, but grew up in America. Some other options to use for talking about where you grew up are, for example, I grew up, and then of course the place name, I grew up in Osaka, but now live in Tokyo, or I'm from England, but now live in Spain, or I'm originally from New York, but now live in California. Any of these examples would be great for you to use. They sound fantastic and they are very natural. Another good option is to talk about where you are living now. For example, I've been living in, and then the place name, for, and then the number of years. For example, I've been living in Japan for 12 years. Or we can say I've lived in the place name and then for the past and then number of years. Another good example, I've lived in Barcelona for the past three years. Those three points are the three most important basic points that every introduction needs. Now we can move on to some points that you may wish to include in your self-introduction. These are optional. The next topic you may wish to talk about is your family. This is great in casual situations where you want to get to know people better or make friends. So one simple way is we can use have. For example, I have a brother. I have two sisters and one brother. I have a mum and a dad. But one mistake I have heard that many students have made when talking about the number of their family members are they say I have three families. This is not correct. We cannot use this one. So the easiest way to describe the number of family members you have is you can say, I'm from a family of, and then the number of your family members. For example, I'm from a family of four, or I'm from a family of three. A very good and easy way to talk about how many brothers and sisters you have is to say, I have, and then the number of siblings you have. For example, I have three siblings. Or another version, you can say, I am one of four siblings. I am one of, and then the number of siblings. But please note, when you say, I have three siblings, this is not including you. That means you have three brothers and sisters. Or if you say, I am one of four siblings, that means it is including you.
When using the word siblings, it includes all genders, so we don't have to worry about saying how many brothers or sisters you have, which is great. You can also say where you are in your siblings. For example, I am the oldest of four, or I'm the middle child of three. And the last one is, I'm the youngest of five. Another possible topic you could talk about are your hobbies or interests. The easiest ones to remember are, I like to go swimming, or I really like watching movies. Or another one, I enjoy hanging out with my friends. However, if you want to make your feelings stronger, here are two that I like. I really love yoga, or I'm really into art. I like these ones because they express your feelings in a much more stronger manner. Another topic that we can talk about is age. Although this can sometimes be a little bit of a sensitive topic, so it's up to you if you include it in your introduction. It may not be necessary anymore, but it is very useful for us to be able to express our age in different ways. The easiest one, of course, is the most simple one, and that is I'm, and then, of course, your age, the number. For example, I'm 35. However, if you don't want to be so specific about your age, you can simply say, I'm in my, and then the decades, going up in tens. For example, I'm in my 30s. She's in her 40s. Or you could say, I'm in my early, mid, or late, and then the decades as well. I'm in my mid-30s. He's in his late 50s. Unless I'm asked about my age in formal situations or business situations, I think it's more appropriate for us to use these in casual situations. The next topic that you could talk about is your job or your company. Now I have left this until now because I think this is optional as we are focusing on the casual introduction. So I think that it might not be necessary for casual situations, but it's up to you. However, I do think this is fantastic for business or formal situations. The basics are, I work at, or for, and then the company name. For example, I work at Apple, or I work for Samsung. Notice we only use two prepositions here, and they are at or for. We do not use in in this situation. So be careful not to make that mistake. Although, if you want to add your department that you work in, then you can say, I work for Apple in the marketing department, or I work for Samsung in the personnel department. You could also lead with your position and then your company. For example, I'm a or an, and then the job position, at or for, and then your company name. Good examples of these are, I'm a sales manager at Mercedes, or I'm an engineer for Sky TV. Or if you don't want to talk about your company's name, you can say the area that you work in. For example, I work in, and then the area that you work in. A good example of this is, I work in advertising, or I work in finance. If you do want to talk about your job or your company, you can say this after introducing your name or after talking about where you are from. The last point that we can include when introducing yourself in a casual situation is the tell me something interesting about you part. This could be something that is funny, a strange like or dislike, about your pets, which I think is a great topic to use. It could be an achievement or an interesting skill that you may have. This may not always be necessary to include, but it's great to have one ready just in case you're asked this question suddenly. The two that I always use in different situations are that I sneeze really loudly and that I have two bearded dragons. 
Now let's have a look at two different examples that I want to show you. The first one that I want to show you is, Hi everyone, I'm Jordan. I'm 35 and from England, but now live in Japan. I have a younger brother and I really enjoy playing golf. I also have two bearded dragons. Even if I do say so myself, I think that's a great example. It talks about my age, where I'm from, where I live now, my family, and something that is interesting about me. So let's take a look at the second example. Hello, my name's Jordan. I'm a teacher and originally from England, but now live in Japan. I have a wife and a young daughter. I'm into comics and I really enjoy playing tennis on the weekend. I think both of those examples are great. They are easy to remember, they flow nicely, and they also sound very natural. Now that we have covered the casual introduction, we need to move on to the more formal and business introduction. We can actually use most of the basics that we used in the casual introduction, but we need to add at least two topics to make it more formal and business-like. The first topic that we need to add is about your qualifications. You can say what kind of degree you have. For example, I have, and then your degree name, okay? So for example, I have a degree in law. I have a master's degree in business studies. You can also use this for a PhD or a doctorate. I have a PhD in philosophy. If you want to talk about the university that you went to, you can say, I have, and then your degree, your subject degree, from, and then your university name. For example, I have a law degree from the University of London. Or you can say, I'm a marketing graduate from Harvard. If you want to talk about the courses that you are currently taking at the moment, you can simply say, I'm currently taking, and then the course name. For example, I'm currently taking a course in British history, or I'm currently taking a course on dressmaking. Notice that we use two different prepositions here. The first preposition, in, is used for theoretical subjects. For example, I'm taking a course in British history, or I'm taking a course in maths. The second preposition is on. This is when the subject is more practical. The example we have here is, I'm currently taking a course on dressmaking, or I'm currently taking a course on painting. You can also talk about the certificates that you have gotten. For example, you can use, I have, and then the subject, and certificate. For example, I have a project management certificate. Another variation is, I'm a certified, and then the subject name. I'm a certified accountant. The final point that we need to cover is your experience. If you want to talk about how long you have been working at your company, then you can say, I have worked at, and then your company, for, and then the number of years. For example, I have worked at Google for three years. Another option is you could talk about the area that you have been working in. For example, I have, and then the number of years, experience in, and then your area. For example, I have six years experience in project management. Or another variation is, I have worked in, and then the area, and then for the number of years. I have worked in sales for five years. So now we have added those two extra topics, we can now put a formal or business self-introduction together. Here is my example. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Jordan. I'm from England, but I currently live in Japan. I have a degree in marketing and three years experience at Google in the marketing department. There's another good example of an introduction that is short, clear, and sounds great for a formal or business situation. So my challenge to you now is to write either a casual or formal self-introduction in the comments below. Or if you're feeling extra studious, you can write both. 
I will try and help and correct as many as possible. Go on, don't be shy. If you found this useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on so that you don't miss other helpful videos like this one. Also, don't forget to grab your free PDF lesson notes and connect with me on social media. Also, please join our Facebook group. I'll leave links in the description. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.